she is all of them are sensitive truth be told since since being initiated they were sensitive before but since being initiated it's different and when it, whenever you hear a bell ringing, like dee -dee -dee -dee, like a school bell, and you hear that little thing, it's going to mess you up for at least six months. <laughs> You're going to be like, what? And I know you understood what I was saying, which is why you're laughing. <laughs> I got you. I'm glad we could be on the same thing. Feel you. And hey. Ooh, someone pin that question, please, so I can tell you. How after you receive a bottle, that sensitivity. So what's interesting is previous to receiving a bottle, there's a sensitivity. Certain certain orikis and stuff that are recited during Ebo require that a bell be rung of some sort. Thank you very much, Ia. Um, and it's a... It's not a cow bell. It's a different bell. So anyway, that bell is in tune with your Ori. And you all know who the keeper of that is. And so when they're reciting things in that bell, it's like it doesn't even matter the tone. Once it hits you while they're reciting at the same time, it's like your whole energy level changes. You feel it's not a dizziness. You feel almost like you're floating. Okay, almost like you're on a roller coaster. And those of you all who don't like thrill rides, you may not like this. And you're getting ready to fall. And it's not anxiety, but it's that feeling of when you go down on that roller coaster when you reach that height. That feeling is the perfect way to explain it for me. Um, Ia Vivian and Ia Sheena, let me know if that's what it feels like for y'all. It's like in your chest and your head is a little light. And so you tend to zone out. Sometimes you'll be rocking and praying. Like you're praying in your mind and you're rocking. Because that energy is so tough. That you're like, yo, why am I rocking? <laughs> and it, They're singing and you just have to move. And your concentration is serious. And at some point... You daze a bit, like you're dazing off, like you're daydreaming. And if you're highly intuitive, you may see things occurring in your mind's eye, almost like a video behind your eye. Yes, that's exactly what it feels like. And some people get heat because of um, the, a particular energy around them at that time or an ancestor. They'll feel hotness, right, on them in the middle of their back. So some people will get it in their head too. But when you start rocking and zoning like that, then all of a sudden you may have waves of emotions and you can't figure out why you're either super excited or you're so excited that you want to cry or you're so relieved because you know there's like an inner knowing in that moment of you being in tune with that bell ringing and it connecting with you at the same time that you know that you're going to be good. And when you know you're going to be good, you're like, yo, what is going on? So it's I'm trying to describe it the best way I can when you're in an ebo and that happens. That is what it feels like when you have an ebo done. And it's so, it's so awesome because you're like, yo. So when you, oh, thanks. When you receive energies, they all affect you in a different way. And everybody is always worried about being mounted which honestly, like I told y'all, is no different than when you see people get the Holy Ghost or whatever. Um, but th what they don't realize is that nothing can be done to you without permission to do so. You gave permission at some point, And that's for any energy, any energy period, whether you consider it negative, positive, whatever. So I need to, to be clear on that. So if it gets to that point where you're one of those people who's sensitive to that, that's one thing. But previous to that, you should be working on your communication with things around you that you don't understand, where you set guidelines of what can and cannot occur, either in your mind or out loud, so that you can just hear yourself speak. I, I don't want to fall out. You could say that, or you could just say, I don't give permission for y'all to do all that right now. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to learn how to handle this. 
et cetera, et cetera. Because you want to be able to remember what's going on. A lot of times, and this is how I know when people faking it, you don't remember anything. Like, you really don't remember. You may not remember the sentence that you said. And it's not that you're doing anything bad. But you may have told somebody something and then they ask you. And then you're like, I don't know what I just said. Do y'all not recall, those of you all who have been with me on lies for a long time. When I'm in a zone and I'm teaching and I'm saying something. And then you ask me to repeat it. And I'm like, I can't repeat that. That's because that's beyond me at that point. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I just said. How did I say it? Right? And I'm like, I don't know. Then I just keep going. And y'all are like, oh, okay. That's why. Thanks, Naomi. Because it's not always me. There's a knowing where I understand when it is and when it isn't. So I can't remember that. There's sometimes where people say, well, you told me such and such and such. And I was like, did I? When did I say that? <laughs> now, when I'm in it... I'm like, boom, 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 boom. But when you ask me five seconds later, even, I'm like, I don't know. Peace, auntie, it's good to see. And that's why that then lets you know that it's not just me. Am I aware that I said something? Yes. Am I aware that it helped or it's helping people at that moment or whatever? Yes. But after that, it's gone. When I'm getting elbow, I feel like I have to focus on praying because my mind tends to be, yeah. Yes, that happens to a lot of people too. Because uh, it's a new concept for them. Asking for anything is a new concept. To ask for the things that you rightfully deserve because your Ori says this is true. Because, and let me tell you why it's a new concept. Because many people don't believe they're worthy of the asking. And that is the problem. They don't believe they're worthy to be asking the questions or asking for the things for themselves and their family. And the other part is sometimes they're good with praying for their family. But when they have to pray for themselves, that's when it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm working on me. They're always, I'm working on me. And it's, it's just not. No, not all the time, Kai. Let me tell you why. Because we're conditioned to be shamed. How do I want to word this in a in a different way? No. We're conditioned to be shamed and believe we're not worthy of what goodness comes to us. So is that really being humble? No, it's not. Being kind and mindful of others is how you should be as a human being. Okay, that's what you strive for. That is all the things that everybody wants. Everybody wants to talk about Pele over and over again. That's what that is. Striving to do right by others to the best of your ability. That is really your lesson that you learn. Praying and asking for what you deserve because it is deemed fit. You don't think that you're worthy to deserve that. That doesn't make sense. If you're worthy enough to care for others and take care of them, why are you not worthy enough to care for yourself? Do you understand? So in Ifa, when we're praying and I see people have a problem when I'm like, pray for your mental health. Pray for the health of your family. Pray for your loved ones. If you have something going on in a situation going on, pray for that. If you want X amount of dollar increase in the next such and such time for your job, do that because you are worthy and you deserve that. You, as a human being and on earth, are working to be a better human being. Caring for others is part of that, but are you not somebody to care for? So... Pray for yourself. That's why I always tell you, and I always tell y'all, y'all know, I'll go and pray for your mental health, your spiritual health, right? Pray for your physical health. I tell y'all that every time because people will forget that. And if you think you're going to forget stuff, pray for all the things that you believe that Olodomari, i.e. God, deems worthy for you. Like, pray for all the things for my higher good, known and unknown to me. 
that covers everything else. And that's what's important. Absolutely. I'm trying to cover all the bases. Yeah. Just do the best that you can. But because we don't deem we're worthy to do that, then we don't ask for that. So then, because typically we're conditioned to beg and pray. Beg, plead, and just know it's going to be well. But you know that you're part of their work. And part of their work is changing your mental to believe exactly what you're praying for. And if you don't believe what you're praying for and you're only halfway there, then how is that supposed to benefit you? That's it. That's all I'm saying. So, so praying when we do ceremonies is different than prayer that you may have been conditioned to do. And that's just the way it is. That's, I mean, always give thanks first. Thank you for the follow. Give thanks first. Even though you may be like, I'm in a shitty situation and I don't know. By the way, those of y'all new here, shit damn ass, I do cuss. And every once in a while, when Yama Shah wants to present herself, they have words. So forgive me in advance. But you can find me on 2BU. But anyway, peace, Reggie. Good to see you. So, um, we're conditioned to do that thing and to pray in that way. You In the fall, we don't pray that way. We give thanks to everything. To those who came before us. Because without their DNA, you wouldn't be here. And even if you have sucky family that you don't know, doesn't matter. Still without their DNA, you wouldn't be here. And in that sucky family somewhere are ancestors and stuff that were good to you when you didn't know they were good to you. You know? So it's just, it's just different. Okay, I'm going to go back. Thank you for pinning that. And let me look. Tilly said, Ia has taught me to give thanks first and pray. And that's no need to be yes boo and you and have you seen a difference in how you walk in your life because you you're thankful and then you ask it's a give and take how do you change that mindset of not being worthy it is really really hard and it takes self work because I'm not going to tell you that I always walk in that space I'm not going to say that sometimes I will question myself and wonder am I good enough of a teacher to help those people who really want it. Am I teaching them in a way that they understand? What can I do to advance that? And even when we finish doing the ELA stuff, when we get into that and the commitment I have to make to those classes and those things, how can I give y'all more and more information outside of what I've already shared online? How deep can I get on certain things? Because one of the things that I notice about people initiated in this tradition um, from the diaspora, they don't always understand the basics of the tradition as far as emotional and mental health is concerned and mental attachment to all of the things. They can recite to you anything. They'll practice and learn Yoruba or try to learn Yoruba and be able to tell you what goes with what energy that they're praying to and all those things. But their mental and emotional focus and the basic concepts and understanding from their perspective, and in our case, it would be from the Western perspective of how we grew up and how we're trying to uh, take what we know, learn, and live and put it together. That's hard for them to do. So then there's still a slight disconnect. And some of them begin to not resent the tradition, but begin to pull away or see it as a job. The moment you see any type of praise you do or anything that you're doing as a job in a position versus living it and it being it, because not everything is going to be smooth sailing in general. We still have to do high school of life, right? But Ifa makes it easier for us. But sometimes you get lessons in that ease. And those lessons then prepare you for it to be easier later. And this will all makes sense. So I doubt at times, am I the right person to help you all be where you need to be for you, whether you practice Ifa or not? So that's something that I'm working through because I'm just trying to make sure people get the basis respect something they may not be familiar with but understand that it is not 
all the shits that some people who practice this thing will come back to you and say because they're in a negative space within their lessons that are being learned for them. That is not what Ifa is about. And it's not to stress you out. It's not to stress you out where you're scared that if you don't do something properly, the whole world is going to crash. That's not what it is. But don't knowingly do something against what you asked for help for in your life. That's a difference. So that's that's where I am with a thought why I do this thing and all of the things. And if talk a tick is gone tomorrow, I tell y'all I'm the same name everywhere. The real me, not the fake me. You can find me on all the things. Okay? Even on LinkedIn. I keep telling y'all that because I think some people, they think I'm bullshitting when I say it's on my resume. Yanafa is on my resume. Doing all the hoodoo hoodoo is on my resume. Um, Because it's there. And that don't stop nobody from trying to send me a thing from LinkedIn asking me to work for them. And I'm like, mm-mm, this is my only job. 